Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. This book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have solved every single math problem from, book, from this book already. If you're interested in watching the original solutions to any one of these problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the middle of redoing the problems at a little bit of a faster pace. We are at page number 159. Please turn to it, page number 159, the very first problem. The very first problem says, y is an integer, we are told, number 51, we are told that y is an integer. Question simply is, what is the least possible value of this expression, absolute value of, absolute value of 23 minus 5y. Question is very straightforward, very simple. What's the least possible value of this expression given the fact that y is an integer? The simplest, the easiest, the quickest, the most efficient method here, the way here, is to simply plug in different values for y. Don't try to analyze it theoretically. Just plug in different different uh, values of y and see what happens. Just, just, just see what happens. Something is bound to happen. In one direction it will begin to go up, in other directions it will begin to go down. And you just want to keep on going until you hit the lowest number and then it begins to go up again. That's it. That's your minimum. Okay, don't, don't analyze it to death. These problems are not supposed to be this comp uh, these, these problems are not supposed to be very complicated. These are designed, these are meant to be solved in a matter of minute. Two minutes at the most. That's all. So here's our here's our y on the number line. Here is our y. And we're just gonna do it here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 if you like. Negative 1, 2, 3, 4 if you like, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, so forth. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Of course, had it been real exam, I wouldn't be damn silly to actually sit there and spend that kind of amount of, this amount of time. You just have to do it very quickly, you understand? And here's the, expre here's the expression, 23 minus 5y, the absolute value. I'm going to start with the simplest possible scenario, which is 0. If you plug in 0 here, 5 times 0 is 0. It's just the absolute value of 23, which is 23. Now, all we have to do is move in both directions, uh, in positive and negative, and see what happens. Now, if you plug in a negative number, you should be able to see clearly that if you plug in a negative number, 23 minus 5y, 5, if, if 1 happens to be, if, if, if y happens to be negative 1, then 5 times negative 5 times the negative 1 will end up at 25 plus 5 and the absolute value will be 30. But that pretty much takes care of that part. Did I, did I make a mistake here? It's, oh, it's 23, not 25. It's 23. Anyway, that's not the point here. That's not the earth shattering point here. The point is, the point is the bloody thing begins to go up as you move in direction, the, this direction. That's it. We already ruled out all the negative numbers. Whatever action is going to happen, it's going to happen this way. We're just going to keep on going. It will begin to fall eventually. It will reach minimum. And then the next time when it goes up again, we're done. That's all it is. Very simple. Very straightforward. Let's plug in 1 here. I'm going to pick up speed here. 5 times 1 is 1. 23 minus 1 is 18. And now that we are now that we are in the positive numbers, well, we'll see what happens. When, when y is equal to 2, I'm not going to write everything down. When y is equal to 2, 5 times 2 is 10. 23 minus 10 is 13. It's still going down. When y is equal to 3, 5 times 3 is 15, 23 minus 15, 25 minus 15 would have been 10, 23 minus 15 would be 8, it's still going down. Of course it's going down by 5 each time because it's, it's 5y. The next one is going to be 3. Well, there you go. Next one is going to be 3 and the one after that is going to be what? Next one is going to be 3. 23, 18, 13, 8, 3, and then... The next one after that is going to, it should be negative 2. It should be negative 2. Let's put it in here just to make sure here. 23 minus 5 times 5 is 25 and it's going to be negative 2 and the positive and, and the absolute value is 2. Right here. Absolute value is 2. Now what happens after that? After that what's going to happen is that when you plug in 6 here, let's plug in 6 here. When we plug in 6 here, 23 minus 5y. 5 times 6 is 30, 
23 minus 30 is going to give us negative 7. And now we're looking at an absolute value of negative 7 is 7 again. But there you go, there is your minimum. There is your minimum. It goes up again. When, we, when y reaches 6, when the y reaches 6, the, the value of the expression becomes 7. Now the part that you have to pay attention to here, listen very carefully, the part that we have to pay attention to here is that they are not asking here, this is a very common mistake that I have seen people make in this particular question, they are not asking here what is the minimum value of y where this expression becomes minimum. Or rather, they are not asking us what's the value of y, listen carefully, they are not asking us what's the value of, what's the value of y where this expression becomes minimum. They are asking us what is the minimum value of this expression? We found the minimum value of this expression, that is 2. The minimum value, the least value of this expression is 2. After that it's going to become 7, before that it's 3 and so on and so forth. That's it, we're done. The answer is 2. Sometimes I feel that I explain way, uh, way too, too, too bloody much. Let's go to the next one. When something is simple, it's simple, it's, uh, I, I shouldn't explain too much. 52. 52 is, they're asking us for the absolute value, or uh, rather, square root of root root 80 and the square root of uh, 125. Listen, that's it, we're done with this part. For the next problem, okay, I'm going to first show you uh, what went through my mind when I looked at this problem, and then if you like, we'll do it the proper way, the academic way, the, 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 the mathematical way, if you like. But first, I'm going to share with you what went, went through my mind as I looked at this problem here. Now before, before I actually tell you what went through my mind here, there are, there are some basic facts in arithmetic that you have to know. Basic facts, very simple facts in arithmetic that you have to have at your fingertips. And some of those facts, three of those facts are these. You have to know the square root of 2, square root of 3, and square root of 5. You have to know what are the, what, what are the approximate value of square root of 2, 3, and 5. It comes in quite handy in the exam. It comes in very handy. Square root of 2 is approximately 1.4. Square root of 3 is approximately 1.6, 1.69 I believe, 1.7, 1.7 I believe, no 6 would not be correct, 6 would not be correct, I just caught myself, because 16 times 16, I know my square, square of 16, 16 squared is 256, 16 squared is 256, which means square root of 2.56 is exactly 1.6, we're looking at 3, so it's 1.7, it's 1 and this is approximately 2.2, or maybe 2.3, somewhere there. What I would like you to do, before I actually forget it, before I completely forget it, I would like you to watch this video. T's Math Day 3. Don't worry about what this is. Don't worry, of, or don't worry at all as to what it is. Just type in T's. T's as in uh, plural of tea that you drink. T-E-A-S. T's Math Day 3. Just type this in. Search for this video. Watch this video and you will learn what I'm talking about here. So let's go through it very quickly. Well, enough of the talk here. Square root of 80 plus square root of 125. Square root of 80 plus square root of 125. Square root of 80 is approximately 9. Square root of 125 is approximately 11 because we know that 11 squared is 121. So 11 plus 9 is approximately 20 is what I'm looking at. Approximately 20 is what we are looking at. Let's look at the answer choice, shall we? A, B, C, D, E. 9 times root 5, 20 times root 5, 41 times root 5. This is, they're getting quite ridiculous. Square root of 205, the square root of 100. Okay, okay, watch. Watch what happens. I'm just sharing with you what went through my mind. Uh, we're looking for something that's around 20, about 20. It's not, it's not square root of 100 because that's square root of 100 is 10. The square root of 205, the square root of 205, we know 14 square is 196. 14 squared is 196. So this amount is going to be just a little over 14. We're looking for 20 because square root of 80, the square root of 81, the square root of 81 is 9. The square root of 121 is 11. So it's around 9 plus 11. We're looking for 20. This is around 14. This is way too small. The square root of, uh, and then C says 41 times root 5. Root 5 is 2.2. Root 5, root 5 is 2.2. 2.2 times 40, it's going to be around 80. It's going to be way more than 80. We're looking for around 20. That's not it. And obviously it's not 20 times 2.2. 20 times 2.2 is going to be 40. We're looking for 20. The answer is A. That's it. The answer is A. That's how I did it. Now if you like, 
I will show you the the uh, I'm going to have to put pen down to, to use my both hands the the correct way the proper way the mathematical way the geeky way the nerdy way the orthodox way the classical way the traditional way the way your math teacher will teach you how to do the uh, math teacher has taught you how to do this problem which is not necessary in this exam the point of the game here is to take your loot and get the hell out of there do you understand nobody's going to give you brownie points for doing it properly doing it mathematically just get the loot and get the hell out of there that's all it is and that's how you get the loot that's it the answer is a now let's do it properly the square root of 80 plus square root of 125. The square root of 80 can be written as the square root of 80 can be written as 16 times 5, and the square root of 125 can be written as 5 times 25. 5 times 25. The square root of 16 is 4, so it becomes 4 times root 5. The square root of 25 is 5. This becomes 5 times root 5. Here you have a root 5. Here you have a root 5. So root 5 comes out common, and you end up with 4 plus 5. You end up with Something is going wrong drastically. 4 plus 5, not 4 plus 9. What the hell? I freaked out because the, the, so I was getting 13 and there was no 13 here. 4 plus 5, that's your 9. So this is 9 times root 5, which is exactly what we said the answer was. But all of that was unnecessary. Do you understand? All of that was unnecessary. Let's go on to the next one. The average... The average of 10, 30, and 50, we are told, is 5 more than the average of 20, 40, and x. And the question is, what's the amount of x? What's the value of x? What's the value of x? Well, again. If you like, I'm not going to do it here because it's quite annoying actually to, to sit there and do it the traditional way, the classical way. It's a sheer waste of bloody time. Do you understand? Let's get the damn thing done and get the hell out of there. Yes, do you understand? Here's how I'm going to do it. The average of these three numbers, 10, 30, and 50, we are told is 5 more than the average of these three numbers, 20, 40, and x. Well, since the average of these three numbers is 5 more than the average of these three numbers, if we were to subtract 5 from each of these numbers, if we were to subtract 5 from each of these numbers, then the average of these three numbers, then the average of these three numbers is the same as these three numbers. Are you with me so far in the story? So the average of these three numbers now is the same as these three numbers because we have subtracted 5 from each number, hence reducing the average by exactly 5 because we have subtracted 5 from each number. I'm explaining again too much. I'm doing it again. I see a 40 here, I see a 45 here, let's subtract 40 from both sides, this becomes 5. I see 20 here, I see 25 here, let's subtract 20 from both sides, this becomes 5. And there you go, voila, your x is 5 plus 5 plus 5, x is 15. x is 15. Let's go to the next one, shall we? Number 54. Number 54. We are told that y is equal to kx plus 3. We are told that y is equal to 17 when x is equal to 2. We are told that k is constant. Question is what is y when x is equal to 4? This is a very straightforward, very simple question. The first thing we have to do is figure out the value of k. We're going to figure out the value of k based on the fact that when y is equal to 17, x is 2. We plug in these two values in this equation and that, that will give us the value of k. Once we knew the value of k, we plug in the value of x and figure out the y. That's all. As I said, very simple, very straightforward. So y is equal to 17. And y we know is k times x. k times x. x we know is 2 plus 3. There you go. Subtract 3 from both sides, so 2k equals, if we subtract 3 from both sides, we get 14, and k equals 7. Once we know the value of k, if we put it back in the equation one more time, y is equal to 7 times x plus 3, and x is equal to 4. We're almost done. 7 times 4 plus 3, 7 times 4 is 28, plus 3 is 31. y is equal to 31. That's it. Let's go to the next one, number 55.
number 55. In number 55 we are given three jars, P, Q and R. We are told that we have red, red marbles and green marbles I believe, whatever the hell they are, it doesn't matter. Yeah, marbles. In, in jar X, in jar P, we have X red marbles and Y green marbles. And Y and Z, X and Z. And we are told that the total amount of marbles, the total amount of marbles is 80, 120, and 160. And they present it to you, and they present it to you in a very innocuous When I write down these words, I do it for the benefit of those people whose first language is not English, whose native language is not English. If your native language happens to be English, then of course this is a very simple, very straightforward word, innocuous. I hope and pray to God that I spell it correctly. I am not sure about it. I, I suck at spelling, do you understand? So there is always that caveat that if I write something on a blackboard, it is up to you to make sure that it is spelled correctly. And I'm looking in my list here to see if we ever learned about innocuous in our vocabulary lessons. And it doesn't seem like I covered this word. Innocuous simply means harmless. Harmless, innocent, it's not going to, it's, it's no big deal, it's like that. They present to you very innocuously these three jars, these three jars, P, Q and R they call them. What we have to understand from this is, what we, what we have to understand is that what we are looking here are three equations. These are three equations incognitos. They have, do, they have put each of the equations in, in, in the jars. In jar P we have this equation, x plus y equals 80. In jar Q we have another equation, y plus z equals 120. And then finally in, 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 in jar R we have another equation, x plus z equals 160. These are three simultaneous equations and there are three unknown. If there are three unknowns and three, there are three independent equations, three very simple linear equations, it cannot be that bad, can it? We just have to solve for the unknown that they are asking for. And the question here is, what's the number of green marbles in R? The green marbles in R. This is the R and the green marble is right here. What they are looking for is the value of Z. They are asking us, what is Z? What is Z? What is Z equal to? That's all it is. Let's find out, shall we? Well, this equation already has Z in it. Somehow we have to combine these two equations to get a Z, which is very simple because I see a Y here and I see a Y here. If we can somehow combine these two equations, equation number one and equation number two, we can get rid of the y if we subtract one equation from the other. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. Let's, let's give this equation names one, two, and three. Equation one tells us that equation one tells us that x plus y equals 80. Equation two tells us that y plus z equals 120. I'm going to put y plus z. I'm going to put y here and z here equals. 120. Now I'm going to have to go back and fix this thing because my algebra teacher, if he were to watch this thing, he would not like it. And I'll get a nasty email from him, even though it's been many, many moons since I was a little boy in his class. The things have to line up. Now we're going to subtract one from the other. Do you understand? So here's the plus. Uh, we're going to subtract it so each of them has to become negative. That's all it is. We're subtracting second equation from the first equation. Enough of the talk, let's just keep going. So this is positive y, this is a negative y, it's going to drop out. x minus z, x minus z equals 80 minus 120 becomes minus 40. So far so good, it becomes minus 40 and now we use our third equation. Here is our third equation, equation number 3. Here is our third equation. Equation number 3 tells us that x plus z equals 160. No, if you were to subtract, if you were to subtract one equation from the other, we're going to actually get rid of z. We don't want to get rid of z. Z is what we want to looking for. So we're going to have to subtract one more time the second equation from the first equation. And one more time, we get the same problem. This positive will become negative. There we go. We are almost done. This x is going to cross out with this x, and negative z and a negative z is going to give us negative 2z, and a negative 40 and a negative 160 is going to give us negative 200 negative 200 equals negative 2z, we are almost done, therefore z is equal to 100. There are 100 green marbles, there are 100 green marbles in jar Q. 
there are 100 green marbles in jar Q. Let's go to the next one, shall we? Enough of the talk. What number are we at? What number was that one? That was one about the jar, that was 55. We are at 56. The penultimate problem. Just give me a second. Number 56. Number 56, we are told that we have four people. Let's, let's christen them. Let's christen them. I'm going to call them PQRS. PQRS. We're going to give them name. Okay? Christen them. I'm sure we learned this word. Let's christen them. And you can watch the vocabulary video and learn the word properly. Right now we are just going to solve, concentrate on solving the problem. I hope and pray to God that we cover this word also because this is going to be two in a row where I say the words and it's not covered. Oh, so day number 63. What do you know? Vocab day 63. Just type in GMAT vocabulary words. Just type in GMAT vocabulary words. Day number 63 and the video will pop right up where we'll learn the word crescent. That is, that is if you're interested in improving your vocabulary. Do you understand? So, we have four people, we have called them PQRS. We are told that the ratio, we are told, is 2, 3, 5, and 6. Keep in mind that this is the ratio, but not in this order. It is not in this particular order, because we, we do not know who is PQ or an R and S. We have just given them name. We do not know who is who. Do you understand? We have told, we have also been told that one of the person worked 30 hours. But they don't, they don't tell us who. Do you understand? One of these four people has worked 30 hours. The plot is thickening like crazy. The plot is, the plot is thickening. The question simply is this. Total number of hours worked cannot be which one among the five, among the answer choices that they give us the question is which one of the five answer choices cannot possibly be the total number of hours worked by these four people given the fact that they have worked in this ratio two to three to five to six it's a very clever question actually it's a very simple question but the person who wrote it is a very clever question actually I like it first thing we need to do is here's a solution First thing we need to figure out is what is 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 6, which is the total parts. Total parts are going to be 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 6. I see 5 and a 5 plus 10 plus 16. Total part is 16. Are you with me so far? Let's look at answer choice A. Answer choice A says 80. Answer choice A says 80. Okay, stay with me in the story here because we are getting into a nitty gritty. Okay? Is it possible, is it possible for total number of hours for these people to have worked, is, is it possible for these people to have worked 80 total hours? Well, let's find out. 80 is 16 times 5, isn't it? Which means each one of these, I need the room here, where can we put it? I left no room at all. Let's put them here. 2, 3, 5 and 6. What the hell, I'm going to call this P, Q and R and S, okay? just to keep our conversation simple. Is it possible for them to have worked 80 hours? Well, let's find out. We know that one of them has to work 30 hours. That is the condition we have to meet. That is the that is pivotal. That is the most important part here. That is the most salient feature here. That it has to work out in such a way that one person must work 30 hours exactly. One and only one. Not two people and not nobody. We cannot have a scenario where nobody has worked 30 hours. One person, we are told, has worked 30 hours. If they work a total of 80 hours, then do we find a situation where one person has worked exactly 30 hours? The answer is yes, because it's times 5, and here is your times 5. 6 times 5 is 30. So answer choice A works, because in this scenario, we find that S has worked 30 hours. It's fine. Answer choice B. Answer choice B says 96. 96 is simply 16 more than that. Okay, 96 is 16 more than that. This is 
16 times, this is 5 times 16, so this must be 7 times 16. This must be 7 times 16 because it's just 16 more. So we need, we need a situation where 7 times some amount has to equal 30. 7 times. I made a mistake here something, this is not working out. Oh, 16. 80 plus 16 is 96. 80 plus 16 is 96, not 7 times, 6 times. What the hell? Because I thought I just found the answer. Because there was nothing here. 7 times no number here would be 30 here. Had it been 7 here, 7 times no, none of these numbers will equal 30. And I thought this was the answer. I had to be careful, you see? That's how you make silly mistakes. It's 96, which is 6 times 16. In that scenario, in this scenario, the person who has worked 30 hours is not S. The person who has worked 30 hours is R. R has worked 30 hours, but it works. Let's look at see. I'm going to pick up speed here. This is taking too long. The next is 160. 160 is very simple. Even I can do it. It's just 10 times 16. Well, who who would be the person having worked 30 hours if it's 10 times 16? That person would be Q. Because 3, because 3 times 10 is 30. So in this scenario, it would work because it turns out Mr. Q has worked 30 hours. Let's go to Let's go to, let's go to E. E says 240. Yes, I know, I know, I'm very subtle, I know that. That is my middle name. You understand? I was very subtle, very suave. Let's go to E. Okay? We will not say anything about D. 240. How much is 240? Well, let's find out, shall we? 240 is... 160 plus 80, isn't it? 160 is 10 times 16, and this is 5 times 16, so it's 15 times 16. 240 is 15 times 16. And 15 is the total number of parts. Total number of parts is 15. So we're looking for 15 times, 15 times some number, and that, and that will be Mr. P. That would be Mr. P. 2 times 15 is 30. 2 times 15 is 30. This would work, and in this scenario, Mr. P has worked 30 hours. Let's look at answer choice D. Answer choice D. Let's do it here. D tells us that the total number of hours is 192. And we know, listen very carefully, Total number of hours is 192. Is it possible for, the, for these four people to have 192 hours given the fact that the total parts are 16? Well, let's find out, shall we? Let's divide this number by 16. 192 divided by 16. How many 16s in 19? How many 16s in 19? 19 has one 16. 19 has one 16. The remainder 3, the remaining 3, the remainder of 3 goes and joins this 2 and becomes 32. 32 has how many 16s? Two 16s are 32. Turns out 192 times 16 is one, one, 100. Rather, it turns out that 12 times 16 is 192. 12 times 16 is 192. 12 is the total number of parts, which means everybody would have to work times 12, times 12, times 12, times 12. Times 12. And if we do out the math, you will see that this is 24, this is 36, this is 60, and this is whatever the hell that is. But none of, none of these people has worked 30 hours. It's not possible. In this scenario, if the total number of hours is 192, then it is not possible for any one of them to have worked 30 hours. But we are told that one of them did work 30 hours, which, is, which, is, which tells us that it is impossible. It is impossible. It cannot be. 192 cannot be the total number of hours worked. The answer is D. Is that the last one on the page? Oh, bloody hell, there is one more. Let's, let's get rid of it. It's getting to be a very long video. Let's get rid of it. Next one. Just give me one brief second. I don't know how long it's been. Probably it's already been half an hour. I don't know. Number 57. I want to finish the page, you understand? 15% more 15% more in December 
then in January. There were 460 in December. How many in January? I think it's okay for now. It's okay for me for me to now to erase all of this thing. We don't need any of this stuff now. At least the top part here. Look, this question that we're doing is very straightforward, very simple percentage problem. I don't know what it is that they're talking about, but whatever the hell it was, we have we had 15% more of it, whatever it was, in December. Uh, maybe it was widgets, I don't know. Why, what they're talking about? What are uh, employees, number of employees, whatever it is. So in December we had 15% more employees than the number of employees we had in January. In 15% we had 15 in, in December we had 15% more people. In December we had 15% more people. We are also told that 460 is the number of people we had in December. So 460 must represent must represent 115% of what we had in January. Because in December we have 15% more. That's it. We are done. Let's solve for it. We just have to solve for J. 460 represents represents means equals 115%. Percent, percent means over 100. Of means times J. We just have to solve for J. We just have to solve for J. So J equals 460 times 100 over 115. That's it. We are almost done. We just have to reduce it. Let's divide top and bottom by 5 because I see 100 here, I see 115 here. So that's 20 and how many 5's in it? 11? How many 5's in it? 11? 11 has two 5's. 11 has two 5's. The remaining one goes and joins the 5 and becomes 15 and 15 has three 5's. Oh, what do you know? These are clever devils, you see? 46 and 23, they're multiples. Let's divide top and bottom by 23. So it's 20 times 20, that's all. The answer is 400. In January, we must have had 400 people if in December we had 15% more than January, which makes perfect sense because 10% of 40, 10% of 40, 10% uh, of 400, 10% of 400 is 40, and therefore 15% of 400 would be 60. And therefore, that's exactly what we have. We have 60, we had 60 more people in December than we have in January. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.